Hey, it's Jen with Woodcraft Blueprints, and today we're making a snowman fence picket porch leaner. We're making him out of two cedar fence pickets. So these are one by sixes, or actually about five eighths inch thick and five and a half inches wide. And you also need a uh, piece of a one by four. It needs to be 17 inches long. With cedar fence pickets, when these boards start drying out, you'll notice that there'll be some split in here. So what I'm going to do is actually trim off the uh, a couple inches before I actually start cutting. And it can be one inch, two inches, three inches. Um, I'm just going to take that off about here. And then I'm going to cut, measure and cut to my length, which is five feet. We're going to use this on the back to help attach the two pickets together. And you cut your second piece and you want to make sure that these are exactly five feet because they will be next to each other. So trim off this board. Measure to five foot. One of the leftover pieces, I'm actually going to move my saw here to five degrees. Okay, so just a little bit of an angle. And we're going to trim this off. We're going to cut the nose with this. So now you want to flip your board and we're measure three quarters of an inch in the front here. So from here to here is three quarter. And this is my keep piece on this side. I'm going to put this line on this side of the blade. This is my keep piece. And then this is our nose. So I'm just going to put this to the side, turn my saw back to zero for 90 degrees. Now I'm going to trim this off. This piece ended up being seven and a half. And this leftover piece, um, I will cut at about eight and a half, it looks like. And these can be different lengths, like I said, they're gonna go in the back. We're just using these to attach the pieces together. The last piece that we need to cut is our one by four at 17 inches. Now we're going to sand these. Um, when I sand cedar, I always wear a mask. All right. Now to measure where our cuts are going to go, I'm using a speed square. And we're going to measure from the bottom to the top. So designate which what is going to be your bottom and then where your top is going to be at. So from the bottom to the top, I'm going to make a measure on my, on my wood with my tape measure at the 20 inch mark, 36 inches and 48. So what that does is giving me a 20 inch section, a 16 inch section, a 12 and a 12. And then I'm gonna take my speed square and we go ahead and do the second board while we're at it. So 20 inches, 36 inches and 48 inches. I'm going to make a mark one inch in from the edge. So wherever my tape lands, I'm just kind of extending that in. And then using my speed square, the angle on here, I'm going to draw from that point to the edge. I'm going to do one on each side all the way down. 
and then flip it over and do the other side. I'm going to mark at one inch, one inch here from the edge. Okay. Then I'm going to take the angle and go from my crosshairs to the edge. Same angle. Okay. And then this is what we're cutting out. On my scroll saw, I'm going to use it to cut out my little triangle pieces. A bandsaw would work, a jigsaw would work, whatever you have will work. Here's the line that I need to go to. Make sure that it is straight because we're really just pushing the wooden straight and then retracting it in a straight line as well. Now, if you want to notch out the bottom corners to recreate that fence picket look, you can do that. Do the same thing, do a one inch mark from the edge, and then with your angle, use that 45, cut that. This is optional, but you can do it if you like. Next thing I want to do is sand off any pencil marks remaining. You can either use a little piece of hand uh, sandpaper to get those off, or you can use your orbital sander. I don't have a lot of pencil marks, so I'm just going to use my hand sandpaper real quick. Now we're going to flip our snowman over and attach our two backing pieces. So remember our two backers are our two little scrap pieces. I say one goes at the bottom, one you want, kind of want in the middle. You want to make sure that your boards are even on the top and the bottom. If they are not, now's the time to trim them. I'm actually going to trim a little bit of length off of here. <laughs> to attach these, I'm going to use one inch long staples, narrow crown staples. to attach the brim of the hat up here. So what we want to do is in the middle of where our notch is, that's where the brim of the hat is going to go. So like this is the top of the head and that's where the hat starts. And you want to make sure there's a three inch 
overlap of the brim on each side. It should be about three inches. You need to just make sure that it's even. And we also want to make sure that it's square. You just take your square, speed square, and kind of put it on the edge there. And I'm just going to put two staples in just to tack it in. And you can add wood glue if you'd like. I'm going to prop this end up. Now I'm going to finish adding my staples in from the back. I do that so I don't have a ton of staples that you see from the front. Now we're ready for paint. I'm going to blow off any sawdust. Now we're ready to paint. I'm going to do the whole body of it's going to be white and then the top hat and the rim will be black. And I'm using latex paint. And yes, you could um, put this brim, this hat brim on later. I'm just a creature of habit. I always assemble everything and then paint or stain later. So I'm gonna load my brush up with some white here. And since this is cedar, as you know, cedar likes to uh, soak up a lot of paint. So kind of takes up a lot of paint. I'm going to kind of dry brush this so it's not going to be a big, thick, gloppy coat. There's going to be some patches some of where rough spots are where there will be no paint. Once this paint dries, you can take your sandpaper or sander and do a little bit more distressing. I'm going to um, distress this hat and this brim just a little bit. Now we can put on our face and our buttons and our nose. The nose I painted with Glidden, it's called Koi Orange. So if you're looking for an orange, this is what I used. Um, and before I just glue things down, I'm going to place them out to make sure I have them where I want them. For the eyes and the mouth and the buttons, I'm using all the same, they're circle wood shapes. These are one and a half inches. Uh, one and a half inches circle shapes. Got these at Hobby Lobby. They come 22 pieces in a bag. So what I did, notice how they are already black. I spray painted them. Outside I just laid them on a cardboard and spray painted. And it's much easier than trying to hold it and paint with a brush. So let me get this um, placed out here. I did um, one kind of dried too much and kind of split in the sun, which is fine because this is, you know, has a rustic look to it. So, and then you want the nose up or facing down, think about how you want that. The eyes kind of in the center. This wood is a little bit uneven. So if you don't want to put your buttons right in the middle, I would move them to one side. Just pick one side <laughs> to move them on to. Okay. And then once you get everything where you think you want it, you can go ahead and start gluing. I am going to use E6000. You can use uh, like super glue if you like, or a gel. I'm going to do the nose first. I'm, on, I'm going to use a staple to put the nose on, but be very careful because you don't want to split. Anytime you have a really short piece, it it's really easy to split. So 
just be careful. So I'm going to put a, mount, a small amount of glue on here. And then once you put it on your surface, I kind of twist it around and move it in. So we kind of want to work that glue in. And then I'm going to press down. You do not want to put a staple or a nail through these circles because they are cut with the end grain and anytime you shoot something into end grain it's going to split. That's why I'm gluing only no nail, no staple. All right, so I'm gonna let this cure uh, overnight uh, for at least 24 hours. And then as a finishing touch, I will add a scarf to it. But there we have it, our snowman porch liner.